next is to propose the P and E for load balancing purposes based on the shape of the bending moment diagram where there are moments at the mid-span and also negative moment at the interior support this tendon profile is being proposed there will be positive eccentricity and negative eccentricity also it is given that the concrete cover is 30 assuming the diameters of the strand is 16 as given in the question here the maximum eccentricity that we can go is at T7 above and below the centroid axis if converted to the D it will be equals to 212 mm in this case we choose to have a constant E above and below the neutral axis and that give you at the support no eccentricity at the mid span positive eccentricity of 87 and at the intermediate support a negative 87 mm eccentricity the positions of the tendons are indicated here then let us start do the calculations for the load balancing let us try the balancing the self weight plus 10 percent of the superimposed loading that the balancing stress here will be equals to the same weight of the slab plus 10% of the GK and QK that give you Q equals to 6.65 kN per meter square as the continuous member consists of 3 span therefore we will need to calculate for the all 3 spans just happened that the L for the tree span is same. We will need to calculate for the drap. There will be two set of draps, which is represented by the end span and the middle span. You will need to draw an imaginary line joining the tip of the tendon and calculate the drap distance from the straight line. Same goes to the middle span. You may also adopt these equations for you to calculate the drag, which eventually you get this. And if you use these equations, which is the same equations for quantifying the balance load Q, you can estimate the amount of the pre-stressing load. In this calculated pre-stressing loop here will be taken as a guide for you to propose a suitable pre-stressing loop. In this case, we propose to have the pre-stressing loop equals to 397 kN. So that it generates an equivalent loop close to the intended load balancing. And because the loop now is not totally in balance, and also the assume the load balance here does not totally eliminate the loads at the service state there is a need for you to check for the stress limit our next step now is to determine the numbers of strands it was proposed to have the pre-stressing force to be 397 throughout the member where the maximum allowable Checking force is 142.3. Taking into consideration of the long term losses, the effective pre stressing force it will be 106.7 kN per strand. Use this as a basis to determine the total number of strands in order to achieve that 397 kN proposed pre stressing load. The number of strength is calculated as 3.7 unit, which set the boundary here that the numbers of strength cannot be less than this. In this case, we will propose 4 units of strength, and the effective processing loop within the strength will be slightly less than this. However, in this case, our intention is to fully utilize the processing loop. Therefore, 
this to be multiplied with 4, the total processing load will be 426.8 kN. This number will be used for the following calculation. Due to the needs to check for the serviceability in terms of the stress limit, we will need to calculate the geometrical property of the section. This includes finding the effective area of the slab, which is calculated by multiplying the thickness of the slab times its effective width. The most basic width of the slab will be 1 meter as a normal practice in terms of the calculations. The effective area of the slab is given here. The centroid of the slab will be calculated from the equation here as half of the thickness of the slab. The second moment of inertia and the section modulus is calculated based on the equation here, which will give you these two values. The section modulus is calculated by dividing the i with the y. Next, you will need to derive the stress diagram for you to come up with the equations to determine the stress. This calculated stress is later to be checked against the limits for the compressions and tensions both at the transfer and at the service. The P here will remain constant. There will be M min and M max. The Z top and the Z bottom is actually the same as it is a rectangular section and the centroid of the sections is the same from the top and the bottom. The alpha and beta are given. Gamma superior and gamma inferior are also given. The main difference it will be the eccentricity, which varies at different positions, and also the moment, which also varies at different positions. You will need to substitute the relevant value into the equations. The combination here will give you the stress on top of the beam and, and the soffit of the beam. This stress here is to be checked against the stress limit for the tension and compression. And you will find that the stresses here are within the allowable range, except for this where the stress on top of the slab here has exceeded the allowable tension limit. With that, you will know that based on the proposed P and E here, the member is likely to fail at the transfer stage. If you check for the stress at the service state, all section will pass. Since that this section does not pass, the proposed design needs to be revised. What you can do here is for you to look into the equations and maybe do some adjustment in terms of the E or even the pre-stressing force applied onto the sections and proceed with the calculation again to check if the sections are within the allowable stress limit.